I'm very passionate about helping people, period. Sometimes life pulls you from up here to down here to teach you a lesson. And you're in a valley right now. There are lessons in this valley. I hope you learn from them. Objective Independent Justice. You can always turn your life around. If you keep walking, you can overcome whatever circumstances you're facing. This is Supreme Justice with Judge Karen. Mariah Leonard is suing her cousin, Joelle Wilson, in the amount of $4,607. Ms. Leonard claims she allowed Ms. Wilson to live in her guest house and says her cousin refuses to pay for the floors she ruined. Ms. Wilson claims she doesn't know what happened to the flooring and says she shouldn't be held accountable for the damages. All right, Ms. Leonard, you are suing Ms. Wilson for $4,607 which represents the uh, property damage to wood floors. Exactly. Okay, and Miss Wilson is your relative, right? Yes, she is. What's her relationship to you? She's my cousin. She's your cousin, okay. And I read your pleadings. You had, Miss Wilson was living with you for a while. Exactly. How did that all happen? Well, it started in my third trimester. Um, I had a very difficult pregnancy and my husband wasn't really able to help me around the house. We have a huge house. Right, why and couldn't he, your husband help you? Well, he's a pediatric surgeon. Okay. So he works long hours, 12 to 16 hours a day. So I would feel selfish if I asked him to help me around the house. So I talked to my mom about it, and she's retired. I mean, I didn't want to ask her to come and help either because right. they were living in Florida. Okay. So they, she suggested that my cousin, her sister's daughter, come to the house and help me. Okay, so like, her mother's your aunt. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And what were you doing at the time you got this call? I was just a cashier. I was living in Gainesville, Florida, and, you know, I was looking for mentors and things like that, so my mom thought it would be a good idea to help her out. With okay. Were you in college in Gainesville? No, ma'am. Okay. So you were a cashier? Yes, ma'am. So she offered to have you come out to her house, and you had one baby? Well, I had one baby, but while she was there, right. because she did end up staying with us, I got pregnant again. Okay. But, that's but when she first started, when she first came to live with you, you had not given birth yet? Exactly. Okay, so what were her duties as you told her? Well, I contracted it out. Even though she was family, I made up a contract. Of what she was supposed to do? Of what she was supposed to do. Let me see the contract. How big is your house? 5,000 square feet. 5,000 square it's, it's feet. It's a big house. How many bedrooms and baths? We've got six bedrooms. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the understanding, cleaning, all and living spaces are clean including vacuuming, mopping, dusting, dishes, managing yeah. and coordinating maintenance workers, babysitting for $2,500 a month. Yeah, and also she got to stay in the guest house. That's where she stayed. The living quarters are beautiful. Right. She didn't have to pay rent. Right. She didn't have to pay any utilities. Right. Um, also, all I wanted her to do was just the help superficial. Yeah, and right. help me out. So how, how was it working with your cousin? Everything was fine when I first got there. It was more towards when she got pregnant the second time. So how long were you there before she announced she was pregnant again? I was there for a year. Okay, for a year. So we got along for a year. Yeah. Well, so what changed? How her attitude, how she was acting, she was, she became crazy. Like she would throw things. Her. Honey, it was called being Ex pregnant, okay? E excuse me. Being I'm pregnant sorry. is not an excuse Ex to excuse act like Y'all want to talk about this outside and let no. me know when you're ready for I'm me? Sorry. So give me your honor. I'm okay. Sorry. So you she went you went through the first pregnancy with her. You went through the first pregnancy. Yeah, she okay. was fine. Everything was Nothing fine. happened in that time. No. So what was different this time? Her attitude, like she changed, like she was angry all the time. Right. Her and Where, her husband Did you throw things at her? That's what she said, but that is not true. I may okay, have slammed. It, it, it's yes and no, because you just no, said they call it being pregnant, so something must have I been true. I didn't throw nothing at but that young lady. But what was true about what she said then? You said they called that being pregnant. What was true? Well, I had a difficult pregnancy, and I did. I was irritable a lot of the time. Right. Were, but you, what, were you screaming and yelling? She may have interpreted it to be well, a were such, but you I was not screaming, screaming and yelling. Your husband didn't no. say you got to stop that screaming and yelling at me. No. Yes. Okay, so then what happened then? Well... Um, I realized when she withdrew from me and started feeding me with a long handle spoon, I couldn't understand why. What was she doing to you? Well, she was just avoiding me. It was like we weren't having our girl talks anymore. Right. But she, she wasn't high for girl talk. 
That it's is not true. in the list of duties. I know, Your Honor. Right. <laughs> I know, but But was she we... doing what she was supposed to be doing, cleaning and vacuuming and mopping and doing the laundry and washing the dishes? She was doing all of that. Babysitting and coordinating workers. Yes, ma'am. She did she, all of that. She did a great job. Fabulous. No complaints. I had no complaints. No complaints at all. Until... This incident. Coming up on Supreme Justice... When I pulled the rug back, right. there was this huge, huge area that was damaged. I had an assessor come out. It was just obvious water damage. And later... He also didn't put in his 20 hours a week. Okay, but a you didn't put anything in writing. We're trying to reconstruct an agreement. Um, I have my budget in writing, and I have the email that you have been supplied. That's it. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Mariah Leonard, who is suing Joelle Wilson for property damage. Okay, so we're a year and a half in. Things start to get a little funky at home. Then what happened? Well, I let her know, like, you know, I had mentors, and they helped me find another job elsewhere. I finally got on my feet. What was the job? It's a receptionist job. At for a receptionist? Office. Yes, sir. And so you told her what, that you were moving out? Yes, yeah, so I gave her a two-week notice. I put it on a dining, a dining room table. Two weeks notice, a year and a half we've been together, and all I can give you is two weeks notice. And let me just ask this question. $2,500 a month and your food and your housing is paid for, you made that much money as a receptionist? I have to get on my feet, and I can't stay there forever. The decent thing to have done was to give more than two weeks notice. Even when you, they told you, you were, when you interviewed for that job and they asked you, when do you think you start? You say, you know what? Normally I would be able to say I could start tomorrow. But it wasn't stuff my on the contract. Cousin, so. My cousin, Mariah, has been good to me and I feel like I want to give her at least three weeks notice. That's what you should have done. But you didn't. And not only that, when I got the two week notice, Your Honor, <clears throat> I said, okay, she's withdrawn from me. She wants to spread her wings. Fine, no big right, deal. Right. So I went to the guest house. My mom decided she would come and stay with me until I found more help. All right. But here's the thing. When I went to clean up... When, when did you start cleaning up? <laughs> well, I had to because my mom was coming. Right. And I wanted to have everything fixed for her, my mom and my dad. Right. You had already given birth now to your second child. I was still pregnant. How long has she been gone? About two weeks, maybe. About two weeks. So... Two weeks after she left, is the first time you went to the guest house? No, I just kind of put stuff in there. I would, like, take little dishes and stuff that I wanted to stock for my mom and dad. Uh -huh. Certain in little things. Right, but it looked on, just looking at it, it looked like it was okay. Yeah, it oh. was okay until I swept under the rug, right. okay? We, my husband had just laid these beautiful wood floors down. When did he do that? He did that about, maybe about eight months prior. So while uh -huh. she was there, you laid down new wood floors? Is that true? Yes. Anyway, Your Honor, when I pulled the rug back, right. there was this huge, huge area that was damaged. I had an assessor come out to the, to the guest house and assess it. The planks were coming up from the boards. You, it was just obvious water damage. Um, unfortunately, they don't make those same planks right. anymore. You got pictures? I do. Let me see yes. some pictures. That floor was so damaged. I called, I had the assessor come over. He assessed the damage. Unfortunately, that type of wood, they, they don't make anymore. It's out this, of stock. This right here. Yeah, and you can't tell from the pictures, but some of the planks What happened had, with the floor? I don't know. You have to tell me because... It's, I don't have to tell you anything. Well, that's unfortunate because I don't know. Okay. Do we, you, wait, wait. We agree that the floors got put in when you were living there. Yes. We agree that you were the only one living there. Yes. From the time you moved out to two weeks later when she found this out, nobody's lived in the guest house? So maybe but, that was damage caused by construction. I'm not sure. What construction? Remember when she said she put they put in new floors like eight months in? Right. You were there. Exactly. So maybe that was damage from that. Please. Maybe they damaged something. Okay. So anywho, let me see your invoice for the uh, new floors. Are you telling me they had to pull up this entire floor for that damage that was really underneath the rug? They had to um, because they, they couldn't replace that one spot because those type of planks 
they they were discontinued. I have a 100 year old house that had a whole lot of wood damage, and I hunted down till I found those same planks they made a hundred years ago. I'm not buying that you needed the entire floor ripped up for this thing. I'm mm -hmm. not buying that. Well, Your Honor, when I tried to call her to ask her about the floor, she never returned my call. Are you? I was are, working. Is this about the floor or are your feelings hurt? My, it's, it's both. My feelings but are hurt. But is it more that, because your feelings are hurt? Well, yeah, because she's, she doesn't want to be accountable for the damages. Maybe you wasted water and didn't realize that it soaked into this rug and damaged the floor. You just didn't know about it. But the, the, the grown-up thing to do is to admit that I'm responsible. No excuses about it. If I was I, responsible, I, I would mention. I was wrong. And I'm responsible. I didn't mean to do it, but it happened while I was staying in your house. If I did it, I would mention that I did it, and I would tell her. Why, why lie about it? Maybe they you, have enough money to get it Maybe you didn't realize it happened. This is what I'm trying to say to you. Okay, maybe. Maybe. We all agreed that nobody else was staying there. Mm -hmm. But I'm not giving you $4,607. I'm going to give you half of that. Because I don't believe that entire floor needed to be replaced. I'm going to give you uh, $2,300. How are you going to pay that $2,300? I can just get it from my savings. Oh, you got $2,300? Oh, well, yeah, you were living in a house for a year and a half. Yeah. There you go. All right, I'm ready to rule judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,300. Good luck to you. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $2,300. You know, I'm glad it worked out the way it did, and it's just good that you have to be accountable for what you do, but you know you're always welcome to come back and stay. Thank you, and I'll pay you back, and thank you for the opportunity. Coming up. Before we did this, he knew that his salary was contingent upon him raising that money. This entire festival was contingent it's on his $10,000 raising. Writing. Event promoter Joel Turner is suing Paula Evans in the amount of $400. Mr. Turner claims Ms. Evans hired him to organize a comedy festival fundraiser and says he's still owed for his services. Ms. Evans claims Mr. Turner's salary was contingent on the amount raised and says he didn't meet the crowdsourcing goal as promised. Mr. Turner, you're suing Ms. Evans for $400 uh, that you claim she owes you for organizing an event? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so is that what you do for a living? Uh, yes, ma'am, that is what I do for a living. I'm a promoter, okay. and I was hired by Miss Evans to promote a comedy festival for her, but, and we agreed upon a rate, but What was the rate that you agreed upon? The rate was $400 for 20 hours. Is that right? Uh, per 20 hours of work. Okay, correct. so was there any agreement if you were to exceed the 20 hours? Uh, yes, I, there, was, there was a statement that the hours would be fluid. Did you guys have a contract? Uh, we had a verbal agreement. A verbal and we, agreement. And we shared emails between each other explaining the details. Right. Okay. Do you have copies of your emails? Uh, yes, I do, Your oh, Honor. Okay, it's very archaic, you know, emails. <laughs> yes. I'm okay with the rate you mentioned, $400 at 20 hours a week. We can keep it fluid as some weeks you may not need to work that many hours once everything is up and running. What did that mean to you? Well, if you look at the top of the email, it says that his primary goal is to be fundraising. Fundraising is mentioned several times throughout the email. Okay. And that his goal is to be raising $10,000 so that I can put on this comedy festival. It's to help me raise $10,000. These are your words. Is your goal is to help me raise $10,000. Correct. He is the promoter for an event. And as such, he was to set up a crowdsourcing uh -huh. uh, Did you fundraiser. set up crowdsourcing? Uh, yes, I did create a uh, crowdfunding page. For, How much did you raise there? Uh, on that crowdfunding page page, we only managed to raise $4,000. $4,000. Now, mm -hmm. what do you do for a living? I am a stand-up comedian. Well, do you have a name? Do you, I mean, can you raise money just on your name? People want to come because you, Ms. Evans, are a part of the program. Um, I am notorious uh, throughout the Northeast. Coming up. Before we did this, he knew that his salary was contingent upon him raising that money. This entire festival was contingent it's on his $10,000 raising. Writing. Supreme Justice is back with the case of Joel Turner, 
who is suing Paula Evans for non-payment of services. What else did you do to promote it? Uh, I reached out to all my contacts as well as the contacts that she provided me. Okay, so and you I did provide him contacts too? Absolutely. Okay. This festival is completely my baby, so right. I fronted the money for How all of the marketing. How much money did you put up? For the venue. Um, up front, there was probably about 2000 2000 and another 4000 maybe like $8,000. Okay, I have see, a breakdown yeah, of the, the budget. Breakdown. Did you know that, that she had spent, put up $8,000 of her money? I was not aware of that. Okay. Absolutely. And he also knew, Your Honor, that his salary was contingent upon this crowdfunding that right. he did. Right. But y'all didn't put this he in He also right. didn't put in his 20 hours a week. Okay, it was but a you didn't put anything in writing. We're trying to reconstruct an agreement. Um, I have my budget in writing, and I have the email that you have been supplied. That's it. And That's I what have, we got. I have my invoices in writing. Okay, but when did you send the invoices? I sent the invoices after the crowdfunding ended, uh, two days before the event. I sent my invoices in, and she responded saying that she wasn't happy and that she wanted to only pay me $400, even though the invoices stated that I would be pay, paid $800, so she snubbed me for half of it. He's only working six hours a week versus 20, which was my that expectation. Is, that is true. I, I did, and I mentioned, the, the invoices do reflect that, that I did put in six to seven hours per week, but right. it all added up to a total of 40 hours. Therefore, at a rate of $20 an hour, I should make $800. $800, right. Judge Karen's verdict when Supreme Justice returns. Thing is, you should have made it clear. And in the future, because I will you definitely didn't make, be putting make it in clear writing. that it's open to interpretation. And I interpret it to me. Fluid means it could be more than that. And it was always we might have gotten up to fifteen thousand dollars in the crowdfunding. And how, now that you know it, I've worked fifty hours because I've done so much. What you have said to them? Oh no, mm -hmm. I'm Contingent not going to give him you, raising ten thousand dollars. I'm not going to give you more than four hundred dollars. If he had raised you $20,000 from crowdsourcing, you would have been paying him the $800. Before we did this, he knew that his salary was contingent upon him raising that money. This entire festival was contingent it's on his $10,000 raising. It's writing. He gave you an invoice. You're not really objecting to the invoice. You paid him $400. You owe him $400. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $400. Judge Karen has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $400. I feel that you took advantage of me, but I'm glad that now you'll be paying me what I'm owed. I think I was clear.